Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Geeks and Terrians. It's me, your boy Eli. It's me, Joe. And we're here to talk about a very interesting topic that recently came out in the anime world. Uh, especially when it comes to the terms of animation. It's the recent short that was released by Netflix. I forget the name of the studio, but essentially it's a short involving um, a young boy and his dog, which, you know... I mean, it's aptly called Dog and the Boy. Dog you know? and the Boy. Um, but the, the, the thing about this uh, short is, one... And it's a very one important thing is that it, is, it has AI art. Yeah, um, I think it's said in the actual tweet from Netflix Japan that as an effort, and this I think straight like translated, mm-hmm. I guess, as an effort to uh, help uh, the anime industry, which has a short labor shortage, we use image generating technology for the background images of the, you know, the short. Mm-hmm. So, and that's from Netflix Japan basically saying, like, you know, like, hey, the studio used this because. You know, that's this, like, look at what we can do, right? Um, and that's gotten a lot of people a little upset, <laughs> mainly from the art community, because... I, I, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of in that boat, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, because, I, cause, I mean, it's been, it's been a growing uh, issue of controversy when it comes to, like, AI-made art in mm-hmm. the past year, um, because, rightfully so, it's like, hey, um... Mm-hmm. People who make art for a living are obviously a little concerned it's, about where this technology can go. <laughs> yeah, um, as you know, many artists. I'm, I'm friends with artists. I am myself an artist. Um, I I can detest that being an artist can be a very difficult job. I think it's the common like you know joke about artists like oh you what well, what's the point of getting an I could have gotten an actual real job. You know the the things that people kind of say about artists. As a joke, mm-hmm. um, which we we artists take take that joke here. I take that as a joke too, because we were like, we know it, it's something we're passionate about. It's something that um, we you know strive to be better at. Try to do uh, try try to do more with it, and some try to go in a direction where it's very you know kind of stuff for like museums or murals or all that kind of stuff. Some animation, some and some other things, right? Different different mediums. Uh, so seeing AI generated art, especially from the perspective of an artist, uh, it has bothered me a bit because it's like, for me, it's like okay, something's off. Like every time I see AI art, I'm like, okay, something's off. Well, I mean, yeah, I think it's aside from the fingers. <laughs> yeah, like I was gonna say because I think the only AI art I've seen so far has been mostly just like those ones that like, uh, like do anime. Kind of, you know, like they like you just input something or whatever. Because mm-hmm. if I recall correctly, it's just sort of like these uh, AIs just sort of take images from uh, mm-hmm. sort of like uh, from the internet and stuff. They sort of compile it together and stuff, and that's how they make the art. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lot of it I've seen is mainly just from like anime characters, and it's like okay, this it does look nice, but one they all have the same style, which is like you know, yeah. It, it, you can like from obviously once you can kind of like dis- see one you kind of seen them all yeah and also like you said they, they have some weird inconsistencies where like you know if they have to do fingers like the fingers will be like super like wonky or like maybe they'll have too many fingers that are overlapping each other that looks like it might look like a toe yeah it's yeah like clearly like the technology still has like some mm. a ways to go and i'm not saying that ai and art is is um generally a bad thing right no is, is i feel like you could be if done right you can find a maybe a cool way to emphasize you know introduce it but it does kind of like you know that there's limitations and an overabundance of it is like a fear that a lot of artists have well yeah and i think part of that overabundance is also because you know it, we, it, we might see art go the way of like automation mm-hmm. you know like um, you know, there's probably tons of people who lost jobs once car dealerships or, or the car manufacturers started doing like machines. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, and that's sort of like the big worry too. And I think especially it's the, the I think the main crux of this anime short too is like their whole reasoning of why they used AR AI art to make the backgrounds is that there's a labor shortage in yeah. the anime industry. Therefore. And um, and that's that's kind of like the, the the one of the big things we're gonna, we're gonna end up talking about, right? 
is that one one we're already talking about you know the idea of AI art whether it's good or not um I'm very much I'm not a fan of it but I feel like if you can find a way to make it work it can work it's one of those things where and I'm very much a believer that anyone is an artist everyone has their own style everyone has their own unique thing even if someone says that I'm never I'm never someone who says like oh that artist shit <laughs> <laughs> I would never say that unless like there's something about it that like just doesn't like fall the well not the rules of art but like you know maybe you're not skilled for this but you're better skilled for this kind of stuff there's always an avenue for artists there's always a, a, a style and there's always like a thing that you know people will grab to more like some artists aren't aren't made for animation and some art is and then you know like like I, I am a firm believer that anyone can be an artist if, you know, it's just a lot of time and dedication. You're not going to be a um, rock star immediately as soon as you buy a guitar. It's going to take time and practice. You're not, like, it doesn't It doesn't just come naturally sometimes. It's, it's a lot of hard work. Yeah, and that is, I think, true with all sort of professions, especially in the creative side, you know? Mm-hmm. Um because yeah, uh, any fool. I I know I, I wouldn't say any fool, but yeah, anyone can like sort of take a pencil and draw something. Mm. But like to be a sort of artist, you have to hone your craft and do what you want to do, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it is sort of the uh, that is like I said, the main crux of the controversy with this anime short because is you know a lot of people are like, well, all right, if you're not hiring. You know, if you're seeing this as like a way to like, oh, let's make it easier for us to studio and just have an AI just generate all these images. It's like, okay, so what does that mean for any artists or that wants any to like, background artist, you know, uh, like, concept artist, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, like that. It's a sign of like, okay, so a, a studio is actually willing to use these AI methods. Mm-hmm. What happens when you know the job market stabilizes? Does that mean they're like? Well, we don't have to pay anyone to do this. We just had a computer do it for us, so it's, I mean, it's it, kinda, saves, it saves us money when you think about it's it. It's kind of <laughs> like that uh, that trend I saw a while on uh, on social media about that uh, that Taco Bell or whatever that had an automated. Uh, I think it was a McDonald's. Was it a McDonald's? I could have sworn, it might have been might have been both. Yeah, because I do remember like there was like I think one McDonald's restaurant that was trying out like where they wouldn't have a cashier guy or whatever. Like, they would still have people cooking in the back. Yeah. But you would be placing your orders on just, like, a, a computer, mm-hmm. basically. Like, that whole system of, like, instead of going to a cashier or the register or whatever and be like, hey, I want this, this, and then they'll put it for you. You just, it's just a screen. You tap what you want. You, you know, you pay with credit or whatever. And then you just wait for the guys in the back to cook it and then bring it out to you. And that's the future, it. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, and, you know, again... Like, a lot of people are uh, worried about automation being, like, this uh, big problem. Which, I mean, you know, granted, we're not experts in, sort of, (laughs) economics. I mean, as you can clearly tell by this podcast's Mm -hmm. name, um, we are definitely not those types of uh, analytic geeks. Um, But, you know, the idea it's been, like, a popping trend of, like, when it comes to, as technology advances, you know, there's a lot of, like you know, I guess, quote unquote, unskilled labor that people see. And they're like, all right, well, we can save money by just putting it as a robot. And that's, you know, and that's the fear, at least in terms of, because you're at, like, in terms of like uh, regular nine to five jobs, it's like, okay, yeah, that's a big issue. But when it comes to the arts, like to the creative sector, right? Yeah. Like, you, no one ever thought like you could like automate art, but now we have AI generated art starting to pop up more and more and it's like you know people are obviously like okay that's kind of a little scary that we can teach ai to just make art and uh where does that go you know what happens Mm. to people who you know who have trained years honed their craft to be as good as they are to be now having to compete with literal robots exactly yeah yeah it's one of those things where like how the hell do you well and Here's the thing about what comes to AI art, and I think the way that the animated short is doing it, which we'll be talking about soon in a minute, mm-hmm. um, is that it's using it limitedly and not as expensively. Like it's not animating anything; it's just more or less uh, background sets. So that's that's something that I think that AI could, yeah, sure, fine. 
still takes away from jobs. That's the thing that's the problem. Um, for me, though, one of the things I've always said about with with my take on art is that it, I love it when I can see like the time and patience it took to make that art. It, like whether it be like, you know pencil, digital, uh, paint, inks, whatever. Like I've always been a fan of that, and to take that away would kind of make it feel less. I don't know, less, uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Interesting, I guess. Because, like, uh, oftentimes, you know, sometimes, you know, seeing the inconsistencies or, like, the chain, the places where, like, oh, you know, clear to this person, like, erase it here or, like, you know. The, yeah, the, it's the human aspect, I guess. Yes, yes, exactly. You know, like, you get to see, like, you know, the thought process of the person making the art, right? Mm-hmm. And, yeah, with AI art, it's very much straight up it's generated by a, a computer and you're just sort of like mm. you're more looking at the inconsistencies of it more than anything of like okay why is that finger bent backwards there i don't i i, I <laughs> did it think it was something else there i don't yeah. understand uh, um but yeah no i definitely understand your your mm. uh where you're going from like part of like what makes art kind of fun especially when you're looking at it is sort of like when you kind of notice those sort of human elements in the art of like okay this person sort of had to, like, do something else here, or they covered up for a mistake, or, like, mm-hmm. you know, that sort of thing. Or even just, like, the little tiny details in, like, any kind of art. So, like, if you go to a painting and you'll see, like, the little brush strokes here and there, uh, whether it be, like, a comic book where you see, like, someone putting the amount of details on, like, buildings, people, surroundings, or anything, and you're just, like, oh jesus that's that's a lot of detail and i love that kind of stuff right uh-huh. whether it be big or small and i guess now that brings us into the idea of the anime sh- anime short itself which is uh the bo- a boy and his dog right is it called yeah uh yeah i believe the full title was uh um the dog and the boy mm-hmm. it's i mean i mean it, you can go watch the short i'm pretty sure it is on twitter and stuff um it's not that long. No, it's it's exactly what it says. So, you, so I think most people can sort of see it. And honestly, yeah, I mean, I guess when you sort of give uh, an AI a simplistic uh, description of like, oh, draw like a mountain range or this background. Yeah, it, it, it definitely works there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, the short itself, I mean, that's sort of the sad part, too, when you sort of think about it. Because when, you, when you watch the short itself... Without having the context, without of, having the context of this controversy, it's actually a pretty, you know, like decent short. You know, yeah. like it's about this robot dog and a little and a boy, you know, and you know, it, I'm not gonna go in much into it, but pretty much, it's about their sort of lives together, mm-hmm. pretty much, and yeah, it's like it ends on like a nice little like, oh, that's 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 heartwarming, you know, mm-hmm. uh, but then you're like thinking. Now you're th- like without context, like oh that was a nice short, no, I really like that. But once you realize that there's a whole controversy about the AI generated images being used and like what that could mean and this and that, and it's like well, man, now now I can't enjoy this this short that as much. <laughs> yeah, I was just, watching so- about I was watching this short about a boy and his ro- a boy and his robot dog, you know, and how how wholesome that is. And now now it's kind of ruined because that mountain is AI generated. And I, I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> and for some, it's like, well, what's the point? Like, it's, it's just, you know, it's 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 just the background. It's not like the whole anime, the whole thing. Well, the, the big question of it is, and this is the first sign of it, is that how replaceable people are. Yeah, because if, when it comes to at least those background images, like, I mean, I didn't see much uh, being done. Now, granted, like, I, as I think you were saying earlier, when it's like AI art could be used good when you have to find a good way to use it i mm-hmm. think uh i i kind of sort of in the same boat like i feel like ar ar could be used as a tool yeah it's like how you can use like a lot of tools on like your computer or whatever for art uh yeah because remember there's a point where a lot of people had issues with digital art yeah like initially yeah initially it's kind of like oh you can just do that but no it's like there are some certain aspects to digital art where i'm pretty sure it's kind of hard to do Mm-hmm. Um, I know that from from what I understand, like sometimes digital artists will use like sort of the tools they have on their like programs 
where instead of just being able to like uh you know because how you how you draw normally and like say on normal mm-hmm. paper you have to like sort of start turning the paper around do that and that just sort of get things right digital artists will like learn to like just flip the image to help them like draw better because it's like say you're good at like drawing like the right side of like a human face like the like right face way but if you try to draw left-handed like on the left side of a human face mm-hmm. it kind of looks a little weird you know what i mean yeah depending on how which dominant hand you have yeah no so, i know like, that issue know. sometimes too so like for some digital artists they'll just literally flip the image because they can do that on their mm-hmm. program and then just draw it then and then when you flip it back it looks pretty good yep so i feel like probably what might might be the reason why it looks good enough is potentially these uh the, the yeah they made ai art however they probably was cleaned up a bit by human hands which mm-hmm. i think is probably the best and really the only good way um you can use ai art is that one for probably for backgrounds and two have a human person clean up the details of it because obviously, like, I don't think AI art is going to be ever truly perfect where it can... No, 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 no. Again, like uh, like we, uh, we said earlier, there are moments like... And if you have like an... A, you, have, you can get you have an eye for it. It's really not that hard to get that kind of eye for like, AI art. Like Yeah, once you notice, like... It, you know. Like, yeah. Like, I think I've seen a lot of art now popping up on my Twitter feed or just like on any sort of website where people are like sh- showing art where it's like... Oh, you can tell it's AI art. If you if it's not tagged, you can tell. Yeah. Even then too, because some artists will just like, "Hey, look what I made in this with this AI art thing." Yeah. And but other times, some people will just post it, being like, "This is mine. I made it myself." And there's it's sometimes like, where they'll just um have it as their profile. And I'm like, "Oh, that's AI." Art. Yeah. No, that's yeah. Like so, like to give you an example, one time I was just like, uh, you know, on Twitter line, and then like there was a post involved, and you know, like check out what I did, and I'm just like, "Was this a photograph? So, wait, wait, something's weird about it." Oh. These are all realistic AI generated women, mm-hmm. and it's like I'm just like, yeah, I knew something was off because one proportions are, are way off for that to be for photographically real. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Sometimes I'm wrong about that, you know. But the body is, is interesting, <laughs> and but also I was like the shading, the coloring, something was off, and then I immediately was like, can this be AI art? And then I look at the fingers. Yeah, it's AI art. Yeah, like. There are certain, like, once you get an eye for it, it's like, oh, yeah, no, that's AI art. Yeah. And I think what, you know, it's like um, when movies, like those anime movies by, uh, I forget his name. Was it Semeckis? I don't know. Uh, you know, like, uh, Polar Express and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The un- uh, Uncanny Eye. Yeah, like Uncanny you're right, Valley. Are, you're yeah. right, also, as are as Zemeckis. Yeah, like. The Polar Express and then some other ones. Yeah, like, those sort of, like, stop, like, not stop motion, not, uh, motion captured, like, anime movies. But then they have, like, the faces, and it's just... Yeah, that's the uncanny value. The human eye is pretty good at knowing what's human and what's not. And once you start to kind of mix the two and get to that uncomfortable zone, the human eye is like... Or your brain is like, what? I am like, what is... No, this does not look right. It Again, uh, going back to uh, the previous episode when we were talking about uh, uh, the Disney, uh, Disney remakes, uh, it's half the reason why I do not like the uh, Lion King remake because you've gone too far in terms of trying to portray a real lion and it's like, well, you're trying to have a lion emote. Lions can't emote. They don't have the the facial muscles to smile or mm-hmm. raise their eyebrows or do anything like a normal human does. So the fact that you're trying to just make a lion look like it's depressed, it's like, that doesn't look right. <laughs> That's 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 a natural, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, you know, like that's sort of like the uh, crazy thing about this short is that it does seem like because it's all just for the backgrounds, mm-hmm. and for what it's worth, having you know seen the short, it does look fine, and I'm pretty sure that it seems like most likely what happened was that they use the AI art and then they had someone to clean it up. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the best way you can approach it. But having that, that being said, you know, there's still an issue. <laughs> there's still the obvious issue of like, well, is someone going to push this technology far enough to where they can basically say, yeah, we don't need to hire any people. We can just, just put it into a machine, type in some words, tell it to make this thing and it'll make it. And it's like, that's good enough. Cause there's probably some studios out there that are just like, 
yeah, no, yeah, we're fine with that. We don't need to clean it up, you know, because mm-hmm. it will be some guy who thinks he can do it, and it comes out and it looks kind of like shite. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> here's the thing, right? Um, there's a, a lot of work goes into animation, and there's a lot of steps to go into it. Uh, I've had a talk about this a while back, if you remember from uh, when we were talking about uh, Cuphead, the animated show uh, for mm-hmm. during the Video Game Awards. I was saying that animation it takes a long time. It's a long process, and there's a lot of things you got to work with, whether it be stopping you to ones or twos, um, you know, the blurs effect and all this stuff, motion effects and whatever. I don't think an AI can copy that. And if it does, it's not going to look right. To be fair, I don't, yeah, I think a perfect example of this is that there is an AI program out there that can essentially make a video. Oh, the upscale. Frames, yeah, upscaling yeah, yeah. to 60 frames per second. Yeah. And there are a ton of anime, uh, like, clips out there that are, like, you know, used that way. Like, they have uh, been yeah, upscaled to 60 frames per second. Yeah, it's always anime, too. It's, yeah, it's always anime. I don't know why, but it's always anime. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, you can look these up and... It honestly feels off because the, you know, mm. it's an AI that's trying to make things look 60 frames, but the animation wasn't made for 60 frames. So there's some like weird skips and like weird like motion stuff going on there. Like once you sort of get an eye for it, like some people I know, I think there's probably some people out there that are like, oh yeah, no, like 60 frames for everything, you know, that's great. And I think that's just their gamer brain going a little too hard on things. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah. But, you know, like, there's a reason why it's, like, animated at that sort of frame rate, you know? Because it's, like, it's there for a reason. Like, not everything... Well, it's not meant to be 60 frames. No, I mean, you can make an animation in 60 frames. But that's, like, like you know, doing each frame by hand. Yeah. And it takes time. You can't be like, okay, I want this to this because the movement ain't going to look right. I mean, that's, I think, sort of why like, rotoscoping kind of looks the way it does. Because mm-hmm. you are essentially drawing over an actual moving image. Mm-hmm. And depending on the frame rate of that image, it's going to look vastly different. Or, you can, hell, you can even like uh, control the frame rate by just maybe skipping a few frames mm-hmm. yourself when you're rotoscoping it. Yeah, and like, even then, the, the AI-generated thing is known for like skipping frames. Yeah, because it's like, I want to, it's like, it's only objective is to achieve 60 frames and using the images it's being provided. So it'll sometimes either like squash like a, like a frame or just maybe like, yeah. it'll change the frames it's been given to make it look 60 frames. And that's mm-hmm. why you'll get like a weird inconsistent look sometimes with those videos. Mm-hmm. Like re- seriously, check them out and like sort of like compare them to the original and you're like, okay, it's... I can kind of like see why it looks maybe smoother, but... There's some weird things where it just like, you know. And sometimes people tend to forget that you kind of need the in between images to be ugly. But yeah, like like I said, like if you just compare those two, like the videos and stuff. Yeah. Like I feel like you would kind of like get like oh, okay, I kind of get it now. Uh, granted, I I know some people are really all for like you know s- you know things being sixty frames a second all the time, and I'm I'm pretty sure a good chunk of that is just gamers. Like yeah, it's always gamers. I mean, I mean, like, but it's like I said, like, there's a reason why in animation, in between frames, there can be ugly because, like, that's kind of the point. You're not, you're supposed to like mimic the movement, and like, it's gonna look a little weird in movement. Yeah, like, heck, I'm pretty sure if you can just record yourself doing any sort of like, like fast moving motion, and try to slow it down, you know, like the camera's only gonna be able to like capture you know, Mm -hmm. so many things. And, like, heck, even if you you yourself moving your, like, your hand, like, super fast in front of you, it's going to look like a blur, Mm -hmm. you know? And that's what, like, a lot of animation tries to replicate, you know, that sort of blur effects and all that stuff. And I think, uh, I think probably a good famous example, at least when it comes to my brain, when it comes to, uh, like, those sorts of, like, uh, complaints about like oh that looks bad in the in between function is like the uh, the Naruto pain fight oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no that's the point <laughs> yeah I mean granted I still find it like a little funny like yeah. when it's like my pain is greater than yours like that one moment yeah 
Like, I mean, I mean, I find it funny, but at the same time, I get it. I it's, get it's why a, it's, like, it's why it's, it a, like it's that. a it's a kind of motion. Yeah, it's a it's a motion style that people use in animation. Yeah, and people who don't know anything about animation don't know that. <laughs> yeah, but I think the yeah uh, to go back to it, like probably one of the more underlying mm. tones of it uh, of the uh, of this whole controversy is that the only reason they use this AI technology is because there is a labor shortage uh, in Japan, I guess, when it comes to their animation, you know, for making anime and stuff. Mm. Which I think kind of, like, has an underlying tone of, like, a- a- there's just too much anime coming out nowadays. I think that's been a question of concern for some animation animating studios. Because it does seem like... Yeah, because if that, you know... Because we've heard, I mean, heck, uh, Attack on Titan, the last season. The last, final, third. Part two. Uh, remix know, plus. Like, the fact that, like, its final season was initially going to be, like, a two-parter. Yeah. But then that second part was going to get another two-parter of its own. And then now it's, like, the, the, the last chunk is also getting delayed because it's, like, and it's like, you're like, what the hell? Why? And, you know, it's like, well, they want to have a lot of time to work on it and make sure it looks right. <laughs> to which the point is like, is it, are we getting, is it too much anime at this point? I feel like a lot of these studios are getting work, work because as far as I am, as I know, uh, the anime studio. Are you studio, shocked that uh, Japan is overworking their, <laughs> their the people? <laughs> Uh, I mean, no, I'm not that shocked because that is, like, kind of, like, one of those common stereotypes that's, like, pretty true of, like, Japanese, like, businessmen and stuff are overworked and they don't have much the, social lives and that's The sort tragedy of, of it. You know, like... Yeah. That's sort of, like, a big, like, cultural thing in Japan and now it's affecting their uh, animation studios. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I know I looked up an article... Uh, on uh, th- about this whole uh, you know yeah. animated short, and it does uh, I think it's from Vice, and it does talk about like you know like yeah like a lot of these animes aren't getting paid a whole lot too, and it's like it no. sucks for them. <laughs> no, they're very severely underpaid. Like like if you're like oh man that's such cool. Like, remember some some dude probably like had to work so many fucking hours just to get that look right, and <laughs> and like especially like so the, the animation studio that's currently working on Attack on Titan the final season. R, uh, plus RX remix. <laughs> I'm not, whatever yeah, you know, like uh, the final edition part two. <laughs> for really this time. For reals, I swear for reals this time, guys. We're not gonna delay it again. And then it's like part four. It's like fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that uh, animation studio is uh, it's called Mappa. And yeah, I was gonna say, aren't they also working on that new Chainsaw anime? Uh, Chainsaw the cha- Man. Chainsaw. They're working on Chainsaw Man. It just wrapped. Mm-hmm. Um, they're also working on. They also worked on Vinland Sack on season two, One Punch Man season three, and they're also. I think they're still working on Jujutsu Kaisen. So and those are all like pretty popular shows, and you know, with a lot of action going on. Yeah. So. You need a lot of animators. It just, yeah, I think I'm I'm sad to say I feel like anime is going through, and it's not like it's uncommon. So like for some studios like Sunrise, they have like little smaller studios under them that handle all their stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So that's why they're such a big studio because like they have little under studios. I imagine one's... doesn't Toei have something similar? Where yes, uh, Toei does have something similar because obviously they make Dragon Ball and One Piece, and yeah. I'm pretty sure they have like. Like they have the Toei studio, uh, you know, they have Toei, but then have like two separate d- divisions in Toei that work strictly on Dragon Ball and strictly on One Piece, and then they have other smaller ones that work on various other things they work on. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And Mappa is, I don't know how new the studio is, but I imagine it's not as big as Toei no, or no, no, Sunrise. It's, it's getting there because of all the notoriety it's in. Yeah, I imagine because they're like, hey, these are the new kids on the block; they know what to do. It's kind of like, I guess, with Studio Trigger. Yeah. You know when they. You know, uh, granted, I think they've been able to control themselves because it feels like every now and again we'll get like a studio trigger anime, like Kill the Kill came out and then like they rested a little bit and then the next one came out. Or, like, yeah, yeah, like it was because uh, they came from Gainax, they worked on uh, uh, Gurren Lagan. Great show, great show, absolutely great, 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 great show. Um, and after that, they left and made Trigger when they started off with some. I think 
I don't know if Kill Kill was the first one, but then after that it was probably something like Darling the Franks, uh, Gridman, and now they also came out with uh, Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. Years. and like they have their own stylistic style. Sometimes I'm cool with it, sometimes I'm not. Yeah, um, it's just to you, but you know. yeah, that's me. Personal preference, but like I said, I don't shit on it, on art. <laughs> yeah, and the point is, is that I think Studio Trigger has been able to at least maintain themselves. Yeah, like they don't they don't seem like they get overstretched with like whatever anime projects they work on. It looks like they, I feel like they work on they usually work on like one show and then like wrap it up and then like maybe take some downtime and then start working on the and, next one. And again, we're probably talking from a purely, you know... Speculative, because yeah. we don't know much about... Someone out there knows more than we do. Yeah, Ask there's, them. <laughs> yeah, there's probably, like, people that are way into the animation industry, in terms of, like, you know, Japan's animation industry, that probably knows way more intricate details. This is just us sort of, like, inferencing about how it seems like it's working. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, uh, obviously... Because then that obviously because that leads into the other thing where it's like okay so a lot of these animators aren't getting paid enough they're getting overworked and mm. now there's a labor shortage and now this one animated studio decides to use AI art to assist them in making finishing this project which leads into like the big sort of like okay does that mean people are getting like like, does that mean, like... These are animations... people losing their jobs? Yeah, are people going to lose their jobs? You know, because it's like, okay, we didn't have to pay anybody nearly as much. And, you know, uh, that just probably saves us money. So it's like, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, it's kind of like a... I wouldn't say not great, but it's like, it's one of those, okay, we might be starting to s- slip down a slope here. It's not a pretty slope either. Not a pretty slope either. So you're sort of like... Mm-hmm. And that's why a lot of people are rightfully concerned about, hey, is it cool to do this? And your reasoning, and why is the reasoning about labor? Because realistically, I mean, I don't know, like you could always just maybe delay it a bit mm-hmm. more just to wait on people or, you know, change your working environment so that people aren't overworked, mm-hmm. pay your animators more. Mm-hmm. So that way you can still get consistent content. Or heck, just maybe stop making a bunch of uh, seasonal anime that no one cares about. About some random light novel. <laughs> I mean, you're, I, that's, uh, that's that's one way to say it. Um, honestly, I think the part of the issue... Yes, I have to like the fact that there's a lot of anime, studio, uh, anime coming out. It's just like the, the amount of time it takes to make it, you know, also... You're probably not going to see any returns until way later into like the, the the Blu-ray sales. Yeah, and that's the thing too, because at the end of the day, it's the studio that's making most of that money off of those Blu-rays and that stuff. Yeah, and why they can or there's like you know pay the animators that way because it's mm-hmm. like because when you think about it, when you're buying like all that stuff from like your favorite anime, it's paying mostly to the studio, and then the animators are only getting like a contract. Right, mm. they only get paid for what they're contracted to do mm. most of the time. So you know, that's that's it's kind of like it, yeah, I know it's sort of like the sad reality of the animation industry in Japan. Like that's how, how it's always been. But like, there's surprisingly a lot of camaraderies though. Yeah, you know, I, I feel like at the end of the day, like because I, I don't know exactly how it is for at least in the West in terms of animation. Because mm-hmm. I feel like I don't feel like Western studios like overworked their uh their their animation staff like japan does no because um, japan like really likes to overwork everybody mm-hmm. and it's not know, intentionally not intentionally but <laughs> shit just happens it kind of happens and it's kind of just a cultural thing now mm-hmm. we're just kind of like well i would like to just go back home but um in order to get that pay rise i gotta go hang out with my boss after work yeah yeah well. <laughs> Go, go out drinking. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's, I mean, granted, that's for office jobs, but I don't know how it works for animated jobs, but. I mean, if it works for, like, people who are in the gaming industry, yeah, I think it works, too. Yeah, and I was gonna say, like, I feel like the animation, anime industry is facing a maybe similar thing as to what gaming is kind of facing, at least quite early on. I guess Mm -hmm. when it starts to get really big is when, like had a bunch of studios like big big studios starting producing just a bunch of games you know mm-hmm. to capitalize on gaming and stuff there's that whole trend where like 
uh, any big movie was going to get a big game about it. Remember that? When there were so many uh, movie tie-in games. Yeah, I remember those days. There were barely any good ones. Yeah, barely any good ones. I think, funny enough, um, I think the Avatar, uh, not not the not the Last Airbender, the Blue People mm-hmm. Avatar, had mm-hmm. a decent game from Ubisoft. And now <laughs> we've gone full circle because since there's a new Avatar movie coming out, uh, with the blue people, not 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 last Airbender. <laughs> uh, I need to I need to emphasize that um, there is also a Ubisoft game coming with it. I believe. I don't know if it's out yet. I don't think it is because I think I would have heard like reviews about it. At yeah, this point. yeah, yeah. But it's 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 coming out. So you know that's 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 pretty neat. That's all I gotta say. Um, but yeah, you know this this is a whole. I think like we said, it's a very. It's a sad thing that we have to talk about this controversy and rather not just about the short. Because the short is really good. The short is good. And, like, I feel like that's what most, like, people who are into animation would like. But knowing that, like, sort of, like, mm-hmm. it's kind of like when they say, like, you don't, don't, don't show them how the sausage is made. Yeah. You know, now that you know that there's some AI-generated images in that short, it's like, well... Now I'm only thinking about is the implications of this on the mm-hmm. anime industry, considering how you know how bad it is already. Yeah. Could we? Could it, you know Japan be like you know the front runners in like pushing AI art to the point where they're just like, yeah, we're not just we're just not going to hire people. We're just going to use AI art for most of this stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah, who who the heck knows where that goes? And that's kind of one of the scary parts. But mm. hopefully, like I think we said earlier, you know, there I think there are like probably some good ways of using the AR art, uh, and you know, have people behind it, you know, have people like touch it up because obviously AI art's still not perfect. No, no, no. And like I said, it's a tool. Uh, yeah, I feel like too. At the end of the day, it should be used as just a tool. It shouldn't be in, used to replace anything. In the same way, CGI has been. Because back in the day, CGI was kind of that thing where people were worried about it, you know, overtaking uh, traditional 2D animation. And it did, but they also showed, like, no, we can use this still. We can still use it to make it look very distinct instead of just being, like, yeah, realistic. And I was going to say, I thought you were going to point out, like, how it's not just, like, 2D anime films that it affected. It affected, like, live-action films because... Yeah. I, I don't know if you remember this, but... When the movie Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within oh, no, came no, no, out. No, 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 there's a reason I blanked that off my head. <laughs> when it was coming out, they were, I think Square was like leaning heavily on the character, like the main girl. Yeah. Like they were like putting her like in like model stuff and everything. Like, and it led to the point where like some people in Hollywood were like worried that CGI animated like people that look realistic as her for the time. Mm-hmm. She doesn't look realistic anymore, obviously. Yeah. Um, might end up potentially replacing real actors and stuff and that was not the case that was not the case because you still need a person behind the voice to perform for the performance and also that movie sucked and bombed so freaking hard yeah <laughs> so i'm just like sorry square i mean i'm not sorry i'm why would you even why, why so is that a final not, fantasy film i don't it. get it i don't either um but yeah no there's there's a lot of but you know later on we were used as tools for stuff to help animators to better and help them out i know some people who use like 3d um models to help with their 2d yeah like how you would use like those like stick guys yeah as like a way to like posing and stuff Mm -hmm. yeah that's actually kind of a neat thing to do yeah so there is hope (laughs) yeah no i feel like at the end of the day there's hope that people look at this and also i mean given the fact that ai art kind of like take stuff from the internet to help mm. make it i think that's kind of i'm not saying it's illegal but it might be illegal it might be problematic yes because if it takes something that's copyrighted then you're in a world of hurt you're definitely <laughs> in a world of hurt so yeah ai art still has a long way to go i think we're both of the opinion like it's a tool that needs to be used correctly and it is sad that you know it's being you know it, it seems like it's been used correctly in this short but it's sad that the short as good as it is is just mired with this controversy. Now. Yeah, yeah, that's I think that's my thing too. Um, I it, it, there's a lot of things to unravel there, and you know only we can we can only go for so far. 
Yeah, and there's also huge implications on the anime industry, which we've touched on briefly, but I don't, I don't know if we're qualified to go even further. No, 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 we're not qualified at all. <laughs> like, I can tell you about this, this, and that, but I can tell, but I can, I can only tell you so much. You know, that's, that's why you gotta do some research. Yep. But uh, anyway, guys, thank you for checking us out. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Act the Games Experience more active on Instagram, where you can follow. Where there'll be links to do all the podcast sites we're officially part of, like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, and all the like. And a link to the YouTube where you can follow us uh, there too. For all you audio listeners out there, be sure to you know be sure to follow, you know, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we have a Patreon set there just for funsies, really, no big deal. Uh, but yeah, if you guys need, you'll enjoyed it. Be sure to let us know. But uh, yeah, AI art. Not really a big fan, but if you find a way to use it well, I'm I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah, as long as it's not replacing people. Yeah, and people are still, you know, behind it. I hope that it can be used for good and not mm-hmm. for ill. It it should be the new hammer, not. <laughs> Not the machine. Well, yeah, it should it should not be the one. Uh, you know, like it should be a tool, like we said, mm-hmm. not not the, the the artist. Yeah. Anyways, guys, it's been me, me, your boy Eli, me, Joe. You guys have a good one. Peace. <laughs>